All right. Open your Bibles to Revelation chapter 18. Verse 7. This morning I'm continuing the study that we've been for many months now been digging in into God's word concerning the mystery Babylon the Great the mother of harlots. In chapter 18 verse 7 it reads how much she has glorified herself and lived deliciously so much torment and sorrow give her for she said it in her heart I sit a queen and no widow and shall see no sorrow therefore shall her plagues come in one day death and mourning and famine and shall be utterly burned with fire for strong is the Lord who judgeth her now that people ask me what is that one day in one day means that's not the subject this morning but Using some of the time definitions I used in the past and the previous in the series, the last day series, if you take a day as a year, then what is one hour? If you're using those same definitions, about two weeks. worth of time. So that's just a sidebar. Now go to the book of Isaiah. Here we have a, a supposedly a queen, a self-made queen. She claims that she has she is no widow and she ha shall see no sorrow. But God has something else to say about that. And of course he said she'll have plagues coming one day. Death and mourning and famine, and shall be early burned with fire, for strong the Lord who judgeth her. She might think one thing, but God has a whole different plan for her. And of course, what I'm referring to is Saudi Arabia. More specifically, the kingdom of Saudi Arabia and its cities. Mecca being the city that's the most recognizable city in Saudi Arabia because of the Hajj and where Muhammad in Saudi Arabia began his demonic possessed creation called Allah and what came forth from that point on including the Quran the Hadiths and everything else a beastly system that eventually became the seventh and eighth beast eighth beast existing today in these final last days God has different plans for her she might think she's invincible She might think that she will not ever see sorrow, but God has a different plan. Of course, you can see that prophesied in the book of Isaiah. Speaking of a latter time Babylon, not the Babylon of Iraq, today's Iraq, but the Babylon, the mystery Babylon in Saudi Arabia. We'll read the verses here starting with Isaiah 47, verse 7. And thou says, I shall be a lady forever. In the book of Revelation, she calls herself a queen. So that thou didst not lay these things to thy heart, 
you need to just remember the latter end of it. Therefore, hear now this. Thou, thou that are given to pleasures, that dwells carelessly, that sayest in thy heart, I am, and none else beside me. I shall not sit as a widow. Sound familiar? Neither shall I know the loss of children. But these two things shall come to thee in a moment in one day. The loss of children and widowhood. They shall come upon thee in their perfection for the multitude of thy sorceries and for the great abundance of thine enchantments. For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness, thou hast said, None seeth me. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it hath perverted thee. And thou hast said in thy heart, I am none else, I am, and none else beside me. Therefore shall evil come upon thee, thou shalt not know from whence it rises, and mischief shall fall upon thee, and thou shalt not put it off. And desolation shall come upon thee suddenly, which thou shalt not know. What Isaiah's prophecy is doing is confirming the prophecy that we see in Revelation chapter 18, verse 7, and the surrounding verses. Now, this harlot in chapter 18 and what's prophesied also in Isaiah 47 in the midst of all that she's doing all her harlot activities she actually believes no one sees her Verse 10 makes it very simple. For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness. Thou hast said, none seeth me. None seeth me. Revelation 18. You see the same arrogancy concerning this harlot. And she boasts in Revelation 18. If you go back to it. She says... I sit as a queen. I am not a widow or no widow and shall see no sorrow or as another translation would put it, I will never mourn. And like I said, God has a different outcome that she's not expecting, but it will come. She will not sit forever as an eternal queen. God has different plans for her. Now, it also says in these passages that destruction's coming and it will overtake this harlot in a moment, in a single day. Now, I'm not going to get stuck on the single day. It could be two weeks, it could be less. It could be more. That's not the point I'm trying to make tonight, or this morning, excuse me. The point I'm trying to make, it's coming. This destruction of this queen that thinks she's invincible is coming. Well, I think the passages that, that you read in Isaiah is referring to ancient Babylon. Oh, really? What's described here never happened to ancient Babylon. That's the problem. If you're going to tie that in with ancient Babylon, then it has to tie in or else God's word is confusing. And if it's confusing, can you really rely on it? If you understand 
any of the history, if you ever looked into it, you would understand that this never happened to ancient Babylon. Its eventual destruction, its decay, was gradual and it was very, very slow. In fact, over hundreds of years. I repeat, over hundreds of years. It wasn't quick. So, once again, either God's word is inaccurate, confusing, or is it referring in the book of Isaiah to some future professed queen concerning the events that are going to happen to her and how she proclaims herself to be like. Or well, in the book of Revelation, chapter 18, gives the final outcome on what's going to happen that Isaiah 47 prophesied. Not the ancient Babylon, but the Babylon that exists today, this mystery Babylon, which is no longer, by the way, a mystery. At least this ministry has revealed what it truly is. Not the only one. understood I want you to be clear because I've had questions concerning well isn't this in Isaiah 47 talking about ancient Babylon no it's not if you want to further study on your own what happened to ancient Babylon in fact ancient Babylon most you know it's amazing to me how some people think that after Nebuchadnezzar ancient Babylon was done with When the Medo-Persian Empire came in, ancient Babylon ceased to exist. No, it didn't. It controlled it. still was a vital city in the area. And in fact, hundreds of years after that is when Alexander the Great came on the scene. He made that his main capital when he was conquering the territory of the Middle East all the way up to the borders of India. And even after Alexander the Great came and went, it still existed. So don't confuse the two. What Isaiah 47 and what Revelation 18 is referring to is a present day, you can see for yourselves, Mystery Babylon, which is no longer a mystery, that exists today, and it's in Mecca. And the kingdom of the Saudis. Now, now that I got that, hopefully cleared up for you, let me continue reading and kind of put a finishing touch on this particular section of this particular last day's topic that we've been looking at for several months. And this is an interesting read. I always get an array of objections from authors who don't want to recount, recant their previous teachings. Sounds familiar. That's because they're stuck in the Christian science fiction teachings that's been passed along for several hundred years now. Some of them have written several books claiming that Rome or Europe is the focus of end-time Bible prophecies. In their view, Rome is most fitting fulfillment of the mystery of Babylon prophecies because it sits on seven hills. But the truth is, if we take the seven hills in Revelation 17, which we already covered, to be literal hills, modern Rome actually encompasses more than seven hills. You can check that out on your own. And the Vatican Hill was not counted as one of those original seven. But why restrict this definition to Rome? Ancient Babylon did have seven artificial hills within its walls. Constantinople is often called the second Rome and also has seven hills with its boundaries. 
But these hills are not to be taken literally. The context of the passage clearly shows that these hills, or better translation is mountains or mountains, are kingdoms. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. And of course, he goes on with his interpretation. And I've covered this before. I'm not going to repeat what I already taught. You go back to those. It was not too long ago in the archives and read it for yourself or listen to, listen to it. Not read it. It's not available in written format yet, but you can li definitely listen to it. Another objection I often heard is that the Greek word used for the place that John was taken is Eremon and does not mean a literal desert. John was taken in the spirit to this place simply to see a vision. If he was just taken to see a vision, why didn't he stay put? Why travel, however that was done, to a little different location to see a vision? John was taken in the spirit to, to this place simply to see a vision. It was simply the theater for this vision. But Eremon, according to Strong's, this does mean desert, wilderness, desert, deserted places, lonely regions, an uncultivated region fit for pasturage. Those who try to claim that the desert was simply the theater for John to see the vision has rendered this portion of God's word completely irrelevant. According to this interpretation, John could have been taken to Mars or to the moon to see the vision, and it wouldn't have made any difference in terms of the meaning of the passage. This is just plain silly. I agree. The desert location that John was taken is not irrelevant. In fact, <clears throat> it is a crucial aspect of the vision. The desert is an important description of where the woman, Mystery Babylon, can be found. And as I already covered many messages ago, what better place than a desert kingdom, Saudi Arabia? Mecca sits on a barren valley surrounded by mountains. Aramon is the best fitting term to describe Mecca and is used throughout Scripture to describe deserts. Matthew 24, 26. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert. Greek word there, Aramon. Go not forth, behold. He is in the secret chambers. Believe it not. This by itself hints that Trouble and false messiahs will come from a desert. Also, John wasn't taken to the desert to see a movie or a vision, but to see a woman slash city. He would not have been taken to a place unassociated with the event. I agree. Because why go anywhere if you're just going to see a movie or a vision? You gotta just stay put. God and He have you travel however that traveling took place to see this vision. You study the book of Enoch. Enoch probably could have seen all those things that he saw without taking one step forward to any of the directions that he was eventually taken in his journeys. And we already covered this in some of the teachings, including going to Antarctica and the route that he took to get there. We already covered this. And I believe there was no exceptions. what I just read to you. He did take him to a desert. He did take him to a place where eventually the seventh and eighth beast would arise. The last effort for Satan's push to try to destroy everything, everything that Christ accomplished, even though he knows he's already lost, he's been defeated. 
But that doesn't change one iota. He's trying to take as many down with him as possible. And he has always used, throughout history, delusion, lies, deception. And for most of the period of mankind's existence on this planet, it's been with false religions and false idols. And he used a version of it throughout the millenniums and he evolved into what Muhammad produced by being demon possessed to be Satan's instrument for Satan's last ditch effort to take as many as he can down with them through these beastly kingdoms. Finally, perhaps the best argument against Rome being this harlot city is the fact that certain European countries such as Rome and Spain are specifically mentioned in the Bible yet none with a single reference to destruction. Why? Spain is mentioned in Romans 15, 24, and 28, and Romans is Acts 2, Acts 18, 19, 28, 28, 28, Romans 1, Galatians 6, Ephesians 6, Philippians 4, and so on and so on. The prophets never mention the destruction of Roman, Rome by name. Has the Almighty forgotten to literally mention it? Yet he never forgot Arabia by name. She is mentioned in numerous passages. Are we simply to forget all these because we don't want to contradict the teachings in so many prophecy books? Arabia does have great influence over the kings of the earth and offers an addictive, intoxicating commodity, oil. And that's the physical element of it. I believe there's also a spiritual element of it of the intoxication and that's the spreading of Islam well over two billion people now about a third of the population and growing it has a physical intoxicating commodity in oil but also has in a spiritual sense a polluted disease spiritual intoxication by using the means of Islam and its false teachings. Rome has no such addictive substance, substance which the harlot city needs to, in order to burn forever. The other argument that some make for Rome is that the products mentioned in Revelation are what Rome exports. Rome produces marble, gold, silver, precious stones, pearls, fine linen, etc. Many think that the list of goods is what the harlot city produces. Marble gemstones, fine clothes. Yet a closer look at the text reveals that the harlot city does not produce any of these items. In fact, she is an importer of these goods and not a producer. And that's what it says in the book of Revelation, since we're there. You go to verse... 11, and the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. See, the merchants can't sell to Saudi Arabia, the harlot, any longer. Why? Because of her destruction. This is crucial, crucial for, its no, for it nullifies the Rome argument. Why would Rome import the very items that she already manufactures? In fact, all Saudi goods are important via, imported via the Red Sea, and the list of goods match Saudi imports perfectly. Gold, silver, precious stones, pearls, fine linen, vessels of ivory, fine wood and copperware, iron, marble, spices, perfumes, liquor, sheep, horses, slaves, and the souls of men. The Harlot City also imports slaves. <coughs> horses, and even ivory. Arabia imports all these 
yet Rome doesn't. By the way, if you think that Saudi Arabia does not import wine because of the Islamic prohibition, guess again. Just because it's done in secret doesn't mean that it doesn't take place. So what will the supporters of the Rome theory do once they examine Revelation 18? Will they recant their theory? I sure hope so. Most won't. I can almost guarantee you that. Because for every person like me or this person that declares these truths, there's a hundred, if not more, doing just the opposite. Keep pushing forward the agenda of the Christian science fiction theories that just don't add up, folks. Arabia has a tremendous workforce. Rome doesn't. Arabia does not allow citizens for immigrants. Rome does. Arabia persecutes the saints. Rome doesn't. Well, at one time they did. They don't do it now. Arabia promotes beheading. Rome doesn't. And I saw the souls of the martyrs who were beheaded. Historically, Rome mainly practiced burning, drowning, or crucifixion, while Arabia has always beheaded believer, believers. There are many parallels in Scripture. John the Baptist crying out in the wilderness was beheaded for exposing the truth. So it will be before Christ comes again. You see that happening almost on a daily basis, my friend. If you read, and the news doesn't report it. The sensationalism of it is gone, I guess, to them. How, how sick can that be? But it's happening every day of the week, 365 days a year. Beheading, stoning, torture, raping. that John the Baptist of this world, the Christians will be sacrificed and very few will mourn for them. Who desires to behead us today? Who are these last days Edomite Herods? Where are they doing their killings? Who represents Salomo the harlot, the daughter of the Edomite? Where is biblical Edom? Mecca exerts more spiritual influence on false theology on more people than any other city on earth. Today, major universities such as Harvard, Cambridge, Georgetown, and many others have been bought by the Saudis to create Islamist-friendly indoctrination programs. Saudi Arabia exports radical Islam to every nation in the world. Why are we having so much trouble with radical Islam? It's because Saudi Arabia has exported Wahhabism throughout the world. Today we have over a billion people who bow down daily towards an image in Arabia while no one bows towards Rome or even Jerusalem. Arabia is on a desert. Rome isn't. Arabia has oil. Rome doesn't. Arabia imports slaves. Rome doesn't. Arabia imports all specific merchandise in Revelation 18. Rome doesn't. On all accounts, this just leads us into one direction. The only nation on earth that precisely matches all the descriptions necessary to qualify as Mystery Babylon is most clearly the kingdom of Saudi, Saudi Arabia. The professed queen that will be destroyed for strong is the Lord God who just judges her. Revelation 
chapter 18, verse 8. God will have the last word. He'll use who he wants to use to bring this destruction. But don't second guess God's word. Destruction is coming. For the Lord God is the one that judges her and he is strong. And he fulfills all his word as promised. And that's where I think I'll conclude for now. This part of the series. That I'll have more to say about it in the future. But in time. I gave you enough information. Enough teaching. Both Old and New Testament. To identify who this is. That God's referring to. It's not some ancient city in Iraq or a present-day city in Iraq. I mean, Saddam Hussein tried to build ancient Babylon. He put up a few walls and so forth, but it just sits there. It's not an active city or location. It's more of a, a mu museum piece of what he thought he could accomplish and revive that ancient city of Babylon again. God had a different plan. And we all know how that turned out. These chapters in the book of Revelation 17 and 18, all the Old Testament scriptures that point to it, clearly identifies who this actor is. And it's none other than Saudi Arabia and Mecca, Medina, where its poison is trying to influence and have people bow down to their false god, Allah. God will have the last word on it. I'll continue this when the time is right concerning this mystery, Babylon, which is no longer the mystery. It might consider itself great now, but God will have the last word. And the mother of harlots and abomination of the earth will meet her destruction. Because thus saith the word of the Lord. And what he says comes to pass. You got it? If you do, play a song. I want to hear from you. <laughs> 